And good morning. We're so glad to have Pat McGuigan with us uh, this morning to help us decipher, decode all that's going on at the Capitol. And what a busy time it is. Uh, a lot to talk about. I and mean, obviously a lot more than we have time here for this morning. But let's start with um, uh, the, the governor's kind of challenges ahead. The, the polling shows that the top issues uh, for Oklahomans are budget cuts, and tax cuts. Yeah, they want uh, it it's all. hard to make that go together. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I mean, is she going to take that on? Is she going to make those her priorities? Do you think? Uh, I think she has made them her priorities. If if you accept her premise that these efficiencies and consolidating some of the services, information technology, uh, payroll, accounting. Uh, central purchasing, uh, including higher ed and central purchasing, some of those, if they save the kind of money that she's hoping, then that combined with three to five percent budget cuts still allows, for example, the one quarter of one percent cut in the income tax rate right. to go into effect, the so-called trigger, which is already in law. Um, and the, indeed, the uh, Sooner Poll uh, analysis uh, is no different than some other polling that's been done over the last year. It shows people both want, um, they want tax cuts and they will accept budget cuts even if it means cuts in services. Now the, the devil's in the details. Uh, on some of these questions, it's not overwhelming majorities, it's pluralities favoring one or the other. So her effort to streamline government, to right-size government, I think she's serious about it. Uh, will she be able to deliver? We're going we're gonna to find out. And this past week, indeed, uh, some of the rubber began to hit the road and some of the tough uh, votes began. Uh, and there pension was some issue came up. Uh, this yeah, week. the pensions is a central part of this. I've done a lot of reporting on it, and uh, it is uh, for this reporter uh, the issue that most concerns me as a citizen and a taxpayer in terms of the long term. Uh, and medium term and to some extent the near term. <laughs> uh, the, uh, we've talked before about the 80 percent threshold of uh, funding adequacy if your bills come due. The average across all the pension funds is 61 percent now. One of the proposals being entertained by the Republicans is to say that you can't give a COLA, a cost of living adjustment. They're not going after core benefits, right. but they are saying can't have a COLA unless the fund is at 80 percent adequacy. Well, only the judicial uh, pension is at that level or above right now. Um, One bill says, or they have to be funded. Which yeah, it has they to be funded. In recent history. And they, they did take a step, and it was very controversial. Um, it's very interesting because they did take a step to require a funding stream from out of the school land commission proceeds of sales and uh, leases and rentals of school land. Uh, to directly go into uh, the teacher's retirement system, but it would be probably worth you know double-digit millions mm -hmm. at a time that the total pension gap is estimated to be 16 billion with a B uh, dollars. And the 80 percent proposal, which was very contentious to require that before colas, would only capture five billion of that 16 billion. So you can see why there's a lot of concern. Now, on the flip side, good news very quickly for the state and for these guys that are going to have to deal with these issues, the revenue projections are coming in yeah. about a hundred million stronger, which means the net that you need to gain is only 500 million instead of the right. estimated 600, 650 right. million. <clears throat> what do they do with that hundred million gain? Do they still make the kinds of budget cuts they were envisioning or do they use that to ease some of the pain for the agencies? The question then becomes what happens on uh, that long-term debt in the pensions if you don't do significant direct deposits. So that's, that's that issue very quickly. That's out there. The uh, issue of the school board was huge a couple of weeks ago, and we don't want to completely forget about that. Uh, there's already been legislation introduced, and it's moving along to change the dynamic right now. And um, are, do you, are they going to are they going to get rid of the board itself? That no, I don't think that the board will be abolished, and I'm not sure that that's in any of the proposals that are actually active that have cleared the Senate uh, Education Committee. Uh, there are propo there's a couple different proposals, one that would almost neuter the board in terms of its power and grant power to the superintendent. Unless anybody think that's radical, she's the only one of the statewide elected officials that has to report to a board mm -hmm. to basically do anything. Um, 
and the 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 uh, the other board proposal would put other statewide elected officials onto the board much like you already have with the board of equalization you know where they serve as peers and vote and no one individual has any more power than another uh, so I don't think the gut the board will be gutted and it looks like the intensity has eased some for dramatic transformation but in a lot of ways this is a test of seriousness of purpose for the republicans um, process reform is nearly as important as education choice and other for the advocates of change in education so the republicans are facing kind of a face in the mirror gut check on uh, where they're going to go with this and we'll see it's not that far off Gridiron is oh. coming up. Oh Quick boy! Word about that. Now I'm going to spend ten minutes talking about <laughs> no, the, you can't. The, the gridiron parody, uh, making fun of politics, politicians, culture, and in fact, making fun of the media itself, is uh, this coming week, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday at the Lyric uh, Plaza Theater here in Oklahoma City, and I'm uh, playing Joe Biden <laughs> and Glenn Coffey, uh, a, re a re return engagement as Glenn Coffey and Megan Glicker in the sales force here at uh, KWTV News 9 uh, is playing Mary Fallon and she is spectacular. Fabulous. So it's okcgridiron.org if you want to get tickets. $30. Sounds a little pricey but it's not for performance uh, theater and all the money benefits Gridiron uh, Foundation which funds scholarships for young Oklahomans in journalism. Very good. Okay, end of advertising. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can read about all these topics at capitalbeatok.com. We'll see you next week.